Michael Cohen will take the Washington spotlight. Three days of hearings on Capitol Hill, including blockbuster public testimony in the House on Wednesday. Cohen's lawyer says he's prepared to reveal damning details of his years as Trump's attorney and fixer, promising a chilling portrait of the president. It comes as Cohen continues to cooperate with prosecutors, offering leads into possible corruption of the Trump inaugural and insurance irregularities at the Trump organization. And that investigation in New York's Southern District, just one of several probes poised to challenge the president well beyond the end of Robert Mueller's work. We start with the man leading one of those investigations, the chair of the House Intelligence Committee, Adam Schiff. Congressman Schiff, thank you for joining us this Thanks, morning. George. Uh, Michael Cohen is going to appear before your committee behind closed doors on Thursday. What do you hope to learn from him that you don't already know? Well, a great deal, starting with uh, why the false statements before our committee when he first appeared. Uh, and did they go beyond what he told us about Moscow Trump Tower uh, into other areas as well? Uh, who would have been aware of the false testimony that it was giving? Uh, what other light can he shed now that he's cooperating on issues of obstruction of justice or collusion? Uh, what more can he tell us about the Trump Tower New York meeting uh, or any other issues relevant to our investigation? We think he has a lot to offer. How about on the finances of the Trump Organization? You've suggested that that's the new front uh, in your committee's in investigation. Well, this is something, George, as you know, I've been concerned about for two years now. Uh, we weren't really permitted to explore it in great detail when the Republicans were running the committee. But we know already, and Michael Cohen is pivotal to this, the peril of ignoring or observing this red line of the presence and ignoring uh, the financial issues. What we have learned to date about Moscow Trump Tower uh, is chilling, and that is as Donald Trump was campaigning for president, uh, even when he became the presumptive nominee of the Republican Party and was telling the country he had no business dealings with Russia, he was privately, through his organization, seeking the Kremlin's help to make what may have been the most lucrative deal of his life, uh, even reportedly offering an inducement to Putin to make it happen, uh, and at the same time talking about removing sanctions on Russia, something very important to the Russians. That is deeply compromising. Whether it's criminal or not, it is deeply compromising of our national security. So those issues have to be probed, and they include money well, laundering well, that, as well. That gets to a question about the Mueller investigation. If it turns out, as the president has said so many times, that he did not collude with the Russians to interfere in the election, but in fact he was pursuing this Trump Tower at the same time, if that's not criminal, does Mueller have a, have a responsibility to report it or no? Uh, he does have a responsibility to report it. Uh, and in fact, if you take the position, and I think it's a flawed one, but if you take the position that the president cannot be indicted, uh, and the only remedy for improper, illegal, or other uh, conduct is impeachment, then you cannot withhold that information from Congress or essentially the president has immunity. Uh, so that cannot be uh, allowed to be the case. Uh, Bob or, or Bill Barr has committed in his testimony to making as much of the report public uh, as he can, and the regulations allow him to make it all public. Uh, and we're going to insist on it becoming public. Uh, and more than that, George, we're going to insist on the underlying evidence because there is certain uh, evidence that is only in the hands of the Department of Justice that we can't get any other way. There were searches conducted, for example, of Roger Stone and Paul Manafort. Uh, there's no other way to get uh, the information that was seized except through the department. And we can't tell the as, country fully what happened without as you, it. As you know, William Barr may have quite a different view of what those regulations require than you do. They could allow him to release the entire report, but under Justice Department regulations, uh, officials have said that if you decline to prosecute someone, then the underlying evidence should not be released. Uh, but George, the department has uh, violated uh, that policy uh, repeatedly and extendedly, you know, to a, to a great extent over the last two years. And in fact, I've had this conversation with Rod Rosenstein and others on down at the Justice Department as they turned over thousands and thousands of pages of discovery in the Clinton email investigation, and there was no indictment in that investigation, uh, that this was a new precedent they were setting, and they were going to have to live by this precedent, uh, whether uh, it was a Congress controlled by the Democrats or Republicans. So they're going to have to abide by that. Uh, and I think also, quite separate and apart from the precedent they've already set, is the intense public need to know here which I think overrides any other consideration. You say, you say, you say the Justice Department is going to have to live by that precedent, but what if they don't? What if they simply say, no, we're not going to release the underlying evidence? What options do you have? 
Well, we will obviously subpoena the report. Uh, we will bring Bob Mueller in to testify before Congress. We will take it to court if necessary. Uh, and in the end, I think the department understands they're going to have to make this public. Uh, I think Barr will ultimately understand that as well. Barr comes into this job with two strikes against him. Uh, he applied for the job by demonstrating a bias against the Mueller investigation. Indeed, that's part of the reason he was hired. Uh, he's also not been willing to commit to following the advice of ethics lawyers. Indeed, that was part of the reason he was hired. Uh, if he were to try to withhold, to try to bury any part of this report, that will be his legacy, and it will be a tarnished legacy. So I think there will be immense pressure not only on the department but on the attorney general to be forthcoming. Are you talking about public pressure? Are you prepared to take the administration to court? Absolutely. Uh, we are going to get to the bottom of this. Uh, we are going to share this information with the public, and if the president uh, is serious about all of his claims of exoneration, then he should welcome the publication of this report. The president has said no collusion many times, as I said. You said many months ago that you've already developed evidence of collusion. We haven't seen that uh, from, from Robert Mueller. Do you have any evidence at all that the president colluded? George, there's ample evidence of collusion uh, of the campaign, and it's very much in the public record. Uh, and it's everything from what we have seen recently about Paul Manafort meeting with someone linked to Russian intelligence and sharing polling data, and not top-line data, not this is why we think Trump is going to win data, but raw data, complicated data. Uh, we've seen uh, evidence of Roger Stone in communication with WikiLeaks. We've seen the president's son having a secret meeting at Trump Tower uh, that was presented to him as part of the Russian government's effort to help the Trump campaign. Uh, his acceptance of that help, his interest in getting that. All of this is evidence of collusion, and there's much, much more. Whether that will amount to uh, a criminal conspiracy that can be proved beyond a reasonable doubt, we will have to wait uh, for Bob Mueller to tell us. But to, to not see what is plainly in front of us uh, means you, you basically don't want to see the evidence of collusion because it is quite abundant. Congressman Schiff, thanks for your time this morning. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.